Ah, you know what old Jack Burton always says at a time like this? I can take it. the screen has ever shown before can surpass the thrills of Ghidra, the three-headed monster. Created from an atomic fireball hurled from outer space, Ghidra, the three-headed monster, threatens man's very existence on Earth. Ghidra, the three-headed monster, battles Godzilla, Mothra, and Rodan for mastery of the world. Men quake before the terror of their unleashed fury. All new, all never to be forgotten, a new high in screen terror. Ghidra, the three-headed monster. Ruben. And we are glad to be back, and this is a good one. Okay, so Ghidra, three-headed monster, well, and of course, we'll get into it. Is of course brings about Godzilla's greatest villain. It brings about his Joker to Batman. Um, and what we'll do, of course, we'll go through this movie, talk about it, but then at the end, stick around and listen to it because we're also going to talk a little bit about the new Godzilla film because the new Godzilla film will parallel this one in a huge way. I mean, because you know you've got Ghidra, Mothra, Rodan, and Godzilla in this one. You've got Ghidra, Mothra, Rodan, and Godzilla. And the new King of the Monsters that comes out in like two months. We are almost there. So, um, but uh, yeah. let's get into this one real quick. So, with the success of Mothra versus Godzilla, which we talked about two shows back, um, what did so insanely well that Toho rushed this movie and rushed it, but it still turned out great. Rushed this movie into production because Mothra versus Godzilla came out early 64, 1964 like around April or May or something like that. Ghidra came out in December, if I'm not mistaken, of the same year. Um and that's never been done by Toho. Yeah. You know, never made two films in one year. So it was pretty quick, but the movie definitely didn't lack for being quick at all. I don't think in any means, but for those who haven't seen this movie, one Go watch it. You know, put a pause on this. Go watch the movie. Come back and then listen to it because this is definitely one of the. We will give you our stomp rating at the at the end. But this is we don't want to say the one of the best, but this is one of the most stapled Godzilla films because of Ghidorah himself. I mean, if it, he is again to Godzilla as Joker is to Batman. So in this movie, it picks up <clears throat> pretty much right up after. Right after Mothra versus Godzilla, um, and Godzilla, you know, he's still out in the ocean. Um, Mothra is on the island, which is actually down to one larva, which we'll talk about here in just a little bit. And Rodan is in a volcano. In this movie, you've got a great human story line, and there's a specific princess who is attempted to be assassinated, but the assassination fails, and she shows up as a prophet from Venus, declaring or prophesying the destruction of Earth by the great King Ghidra. Uh, and during this time, of course, a meteor crashes on Earth, and it's housing Ghidra. And as this goes through, the meteor, for most of the movie, Ghidra is in this meteor, and it's continuing to grow and to grow and to grow. And, of course, some of our favorite casts are back. And um, one of those, of course, is going to be a character named Dr. Mirai, um, who is Hiroshi Kozumi, which we saw him in Mothra vs. Godzilla. Um, yeah, he's returning, a lot of good returning characters. Uh, cast members like we've talked before that Toho uses as a staple. Um, he, his crew studying it. 
We have another story involving the prophet from Venus or Princess. Um, she is being protected by Detective Shindo and his reporter sister, uh, Naoko, um, who, uh, of course, now Yosuke Natsuki, who is Detective Shindo, has this is his first Godzilla film, but he comes back in many other films as well. Uh, they're up against the assassins that are trying to kill the princess. Um, while Dr. Mirai is trying to study this meteor and all these prophecies start coming true. You know, the princess predicts Mothra coming out of Ma Mount Aso predicts that this cruise ship's going to get sunk because of Godzilla and all of this starts to happen. And people are like, Oh wow, she, she really is telling, you know, prophesying in the future, um, building up to Ghidra because presumably 5,000 years prior to this time, Ghidra destroyed the planet Venus, the civilization that was on Venus. And that's where she's from. Um, then of course it all builds up and culminates to the final battle where you get some great monster fights in here because you get Godzilla and Rodan pretty much going toe to toe in a rivalry through a good chunk of the film. Um, and then at the end, <clears throat> it's pretty much up to Mothra to talk to the two into putting aside their differences and teaming up to fight Ghidra because if not, Ghidra will destroy the planet. All the while, Ghidra's running rampant, destroying the planet as it is. So, and it just comes down to a point where they have no choice, but actually they decide not to because they don't want to, you know, it's a pretty cool little scene where you see them communicating in their monster language and the Mothra fairies are translating it for the human characters and uh, telling them what they're saying. And Mothra or Godzilla and Rodan are like, why should we save humanity? They destroy stuff anyways. They suck. Uh, we're better off without them. And so Mothra can't talk to him into putting aside their differences and fighting Ghidra. So he goes to fight Ghidra himself epically fails uh, big time in this, but Godzilla sees it and uh, changes his mind. And then all of a sudden him and Rodan join the fight. And it's one of the best fights in the show in the show era. So great movie. Check it out. Great cast. Let's go ahead and uh, start talking about things that we liked. Ruben, I think you're up for going first this time around. What did you like about the film? Sorry. Well, what, what I liked about the film is of course, my first of all, Ghidra's my favorite Godzilla nemesis, so to speak. Uh, well, not so to speak, is or if his his he's my favorite nemesis. Uh, you know, I'm always having discussions with people, and they have their opinions. Of, and to me, nobody beats Ghidorah. Uh, uh, you know, it just doesn't matter. So my my favorite part of the film actually is um, how they incorporated the story into it, it. It's not just a monster movie. It, it's got, you know, it's got a little bit of spot, you know, uh, uh, you know, you got the assassins trying to kill a princess. So it's a little bit of a spy deal going on there. And then you've got, um, you got the scientists trying to communicate with UFOs, with, with the UFO people, which never really materializes, you know, it ends up being meteorites crashing earth to, and one of them, of course, houses Ghidra, like you said. So I kind of like the, the story on it. And, and of course, the, the fight, you know, I'm a big monster fight fan. And it, it, you know, when you have more than just two monsters fighting, that's always great for me. So um, I liked it. Uh, I thought that it was a, a pretty good film. As a matter of fact, if um, the only thing, like, you know, I always talk about, okay, like if I was to introduce somebody to, to uh, the Showa era of Godzilla, which even though this one is titled Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, Godzilla's in it. I mean, this might be one of the films that that I would show to them only if it wasn't... I, I thought the, the beginning was a little slow, so that's why I wouldn't put it up there with some of the other ones. But uh, I really liked the effects. I liked the, the score, as always, is excellent. Um, especially in the Japanese version versus the American version. Um, a little disclaimer here is we're talking about the Japanese version of the film. Uh, I'm assuming that's what Mark saw and that's what I saw. The yeah, Japanese version of the film, yeah, is, is, is to me, even though there's an argument on which one is better, I find the Japanese version far superior to the American. Definitely. Um, yeah, to, to me, even though there's, there's some debate on that, um, you know, the American just made some changes I just didn't care for. But uh, that's basically what I liked about it. I liked the score. I liked the story. And um, I thought they choreographed the battles 
fairly well. And even put in a little madcap stuff in there, you know, like there's a scene where Rodan's hiding behind a rock, you know, yeah. kind of just waiting. You know, he's and, and every time he sticks his head out, you know, Ghidorah tries to nail him with his with his lightning and then it's like Rodan's kind of like, okay, I'm going to wait back here and I'm going to distract him so, I can get, so Godzilla can get there, Godzilla can get there and and uh, help out. So, you know, it, it's it's good. It's a good, fun film, especially if uh, you have kids. So that's what I liked about it. You know, if I'm not mistaken, um, then Ghidorah gets Godzilla on the rear end. Uh, yeah, that exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, and that's a funny part. Yeah, gets him in the rear end and in other regions. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, he, dro- he drops him on that electrical, you know, fence right in the nick of time to save the princess. You know, but I thought that was so funny how they just drop him on there. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and that's all fun for me. I, I love that part of that. You know, that's what attracts me to the Showa era. Is you know, even though the first ones are real serious and they're great these are fun. You know, they get more fun as, as time goes on, you know, and it's more kid friendly. And, uh, this one was, would be one that I would say would be kid friendly. It's just the kids wouldn't would hold on to that beginning. You'd have to get them to the middle of the film before they'd get interested. So, right. um, yeah. So, but for adults or somebody who just likes Godzilla, it's great, you know? Um, and that's what I liked about it. Um, We'll talk about the stops later, and I'll explain why I gave the stops that I gave. But uh, it's great. Yeah, it was. And it was really the movie that this was truly the film where you see Godzilla's role change to hero. This was the first right. one where you, you could see that. So that fun part definitely we can see in this film um, where Godzilla's role completely transitioned. And you made mention of you know the changes. The American version is seven minutes shorter than this one. So they took some things right. out. One of the coolest things and, they and, took and, out. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, and, the, and the, instead of from being for Venus, she's from Mars. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. That's one of the, the changes. Profit. Yeah. 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 Which I don't understand why they changed that. I don't know what the point of that was, but yeah, um, but yeah that's right. She yeah. was from Mars. One of the things that I remember they changed was when Rodan comes out of the, the mountain, out of the volcano. Again, he's coming out of a volcano, the new one too. We'll get into that at the end. But when he comes out of the volcano, there's an awesome shot of Rodan's head like over top the volcano where he's where he's flying out, and you hear his classic roar. That was actually right. deleted from the American one. That's not even in the dub version of the film. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. And uh, I think another one in the dub film too was when Godzilla shows up. He pretty much instantly blows away that cruise ship. And then all of a sudden starts to right. hear like a scene later, Rodan flying around in the American version. They changed that around. He didn't instantly blow up the cruise ship. Um, and then you actually don't even see Shindo uh, in the Japanese version. He sees the explosion from the hotel room and you, that's been cut out. So little things like that, that they cut out that just really kind of tied the, the two stories and characters and the monsters together. Um, the, yeah, the, the Japanese version of this is definitely far superior. Plus the music work. A lot of music was changed around um, from the Japanese version to the American version. And <clears throat> that tends to ha- tend to happen a lot from here on out when it comes to the American films. A lot of yeah. alterations, but um, that's why you always watch the Japanese version. So, Mark, what about you? What, what was yeah. things you liked about it? Well, it, it definitely is a lot a lighthearted movie. Uh, the drama, the the human scenes, the, that part of the movie I thought was good, kept me interested. Um, could uh, I could have expected a little more out of some of the fight scenes. I, basically, um, when it comes to the Godzilla movies, I'm I'm into just go get them, let's tear them up, let's do this. And and this one is a little bit more lighthearted, and and like Ruben said, is more children friendly. Mm-hmm. And uh, I enjoyed it overall as. As far as um, the characters um, and in in the plot, um, you know, you had a couple of different plots going in, in different directions that kept you tied into the movie, and and it did for me. You know, even yeah. uh, I didn't see the American version, just the Japanese version, and enjoyed it a lot. Um, overall, I thought it was a, a pretty decent movie, pretty good. Yeah, I I liked it a lot, and, and there's things too where you can really tell. I mean, even if you if you guys watched and noticed, when it comes to the monsters, 
you don't see now Godzilla walks ashore when he first shows up and he, there's that little bit of the city area he's in but other than that and he doesn't really do much destroying there you don't actually yeah. if you recall seeing Godzilla Rodan or Mothra destroying any cityscapes in this film you only see Ghidorah doing it yeah uh, you know and what fight where the fight takes place on the mountain you know, the a village gets destroyed a little bit, but it's very small. Like they really, you can tell, tried to the hero monsters didn't destroy as much as possible, and only the bad guy did. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed that change from, you know, Godzilla and the yeah. monsters. Godzilla destroyed a lot of cityscape. Um, this one not so much, and that would continue to go forward from here on out. You wouldn't, you really don't see Godzilla destroying any cities at this point uh, from here on out. So I thought that was, you know, other than the ship. Other than the ship, the ship. Yeah. I mean, he, yeah. when he comes out there, then you know the first thing you you see him, he destroys the ship, and you're looking at okay, he's evil, you know, yeah. he's bad, or he's you know, and then he you see things change, change between yeah, and yeah. he becomes the good guy at the right. end. Exactly, um, definitely was one of the things. Like, of course, I mean, it's Ghidra. I mean, I, it's it's hard to top him as being the favorite bad guy for Godzilla. I mean, the only one that would even come close to me. I mean, you got good ones. You got Destroya, who was great. Gigan is awesome. Mega Godzilla would probably be the most next big staple for a bad guy for Godzilla. Yeah. But you don't top Ghidra. Ghidra is it, dude. Yeah. I mean, he is he's yeah. the Joker, you know, for him. And uh, his introduction was just great. I that's probably one of my favorite scenes in the film is when the meteor cracks and Ghidra comes blowing out of there. I just man, I love that sequence. Um, I, I love the human element of this. The acting was great. The actors were top notch. The characters were awesome. Um, even the the Venus storyline, they really kept that kind of not too unbelievable. You know, I mean, it was I mean somewhat kind of realistic that I thought was really really awesome because it ended up being you know genetic. You know, she she was getting this prophecy ability because. They explained 5,000 years prior, the the remaining Venusans who made it to Earth just started to pretty much, you know, integrate themselves into humankind and society. So it was genetically passed down generation after generation. So that's how she's able to do it. And the, the explosion on the plane is what causes it to happen. So I thought that was really cool. They were able to bring an alien civilization into the story but keep it grounded in a way that was pretty, pretty well, sweet. You, you, you never actually yeah. see the aliens. Right. Yeah. You know, they, they take her off the plane. You, see, you know, that's that part. You see them taking her, you well, know, yeah, when she you, jumps you, out. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't even, I think, she, I think it's more of a pulled out. Yeah. 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 She doesn't. Yeah. She, yeah. It's like, she just kind of glides out the door. Exactly. And so, you know, somebody's, you mm-hmm. know, got her in they, but you, you know, I think that, that works really, really good with the movie. Yeah, it's super, super good. I mean, and, and even bringing Shindo in um, as you know the cop that's to protect her. I, I, it almost was like I mean, I know it's it, you know Ishiro Honda did this, and and of course you've got Shin, yeah. Shinichi Sekizawa, but I kind of got a little bit of a June Fukuda vibe because June always did those spy films or action films in Japan at the time, yeah. and of course his films were much yeah. more action packed, but. It's, you see him got towards Megazord too, the whole espionage deal. You kind of got a little bit of that with Shindo and the assassins, and I thought that was great. There's a lot of weight to that, you know. It gave you a reason why he had to protect her uh, against these people trying to yeah. kill her. And, and that last scene there on the cliff, you know, with the assassin, the last remaining assassin on the other side, and shooting each other, and he shoots Shindo, and it was so, it was great, great. And then of course, the Rodan, um. And Godzilla fight, man, I honestly liked it more than I did the final fight. To me, that was that whole sequence, because it went on for a while, but seeing Godzilla and Rodan yeah. man, just go toe-to-toe was just epic to me. I mean, I love the last fight, and it is truly epic, but that's probably my more favorite fight sequence in the film um, of all the fights is Godzilla and Rodan. You know what I mean? I mean, at one point, Rodan picks him up and drops him, and those two are just, I love that point where, I mean, they're just, tackling each other and, and then Rodan starts just hammering him on the head with his beak and the Godzilla kind of freezes <laughs> yeah. like he's like whoa you know it's like that kind of hurt you see his eyes kind of turn and stuff yeah he gets disoriented he yeah that disoriented look on his face yeah so I mean that that was a great fight sequence great I mean I love that um and then of course the final fight with Ghidra, man, was just epic I mean every and they choreographed it so well I mean you know, Ruben I think you'd said it was really really cool was the fight yeah. choreography. I mean, even to the point where you see Rodan kind of come down to the ground 
and looks at Mothra and is roaring at her, and Mothra catches on, oh, and goes up her, you know, Rodan's back uh, so that they can kind right. of get Ghidra from a higher angle right, yeah. while Godzilla's holding him. Um, really, yeah. really cool. I mean, I loved it. And Ghidra just, he did. He For the longest time in that fight, he just takes him apart, man. He stands all against all three of them like it's nothing and just really kind of sets his dominance of of how bad of a creature he really, really is. Um, so, I mean, that, those are things that I definitely, definitely liked about the film. That I thought was just awesome. So, let's switch gears here. Let's, well, do you want to give the stop rating, guys? And then we'll go into what we didn't like. Maybe that's why we give the ratings. That, that'll work. Sure. That's fine. All right, so as a whole... Well, actually, no. Hold on a minute. Before we go there, I forgot. We were supposed to have a special guest tonight. Uh, oh, Sarge from the true. protest ah. was supposed to be on, and I don't want to miss this, definitely, but he is on the road on tour for the City Rock Fest tour, the protest is, and um, he messaged me yesterday, or earlier this morning, I'm sorry, and said that he wouldn't be able to make it because of service and lack of internet and things, and to be able to watch the film before the show. Uh, but I told him, I said, hey, man, give us your stomp amount and tell us the things you liked. So let's go through. Just Sarge, because I know you're listening, and all the listeners, this is what Sarge said about the film. Um, the reason, the things that he liked about it was, one, he loved the intro. Now, Sarge is a Ghidra fanatic. Like, I, I'd almost think he likes Ghidra more than he does Godzilla, in all honesty. But he, he <laughs> loves just seeing Ghidra's, well, he says gold leg in the opening credits but it's not yeah. his leg it's actually his chest there so sorry sorry i gotta correct you on that but but uh and then the title thing there he just he he loves how Ghidra came into the picture he loved how the magnetic fields worked and drew everything in and that sequence with the the meteor where it was drawing all the pickaxes and things um he loved how every one of the monsters were introduced uh he definitely picked out rodan especially pushing out through the rocks of the volcano was something he loved and something that he noticed he wanted to talk about that I didn't realize till after he said this is they w- they did a much better job syncing the music to some of these fight sequences, which well, yeah. I told, I'm like, hey, it's right. They did yeah. Yeah, more yeah. so than the previous films. So, you know, for the editors and Akira Fukube, they did a great job. I have to agree with um, uh, syncing the music, making it more helping, making the fights more awesome and big. Um, and of course, one of his favorite things too also was Rodan and Godzilla squaring off. He said he just absolutely loved that fight sequence, um, and he loved everything about the monsters um, and how it took all three of them to defeat King Ghidorah because that showed just how truly powerful uh, King Ghidorah is and how they had to use all their different powers to combat him. Um, so he just he absolutely loved loved the movie. The only thing he didn't really seem to like was kind of the quirkiness for younger kids. Um, like kind of, again, Godzilla getting blasted in the face or in the nether regions. He thought it was just a little, little corny. Um, but something he also noticed was that Godzilla didn't use his fire breath as much either in the film in compared to some of the some ah, other films. Yeah. Um, it was much more physical, which I think was kind of a cool thing. Um, that he goes toe to toe, but Sarge gave it a four out of five stars and he ah, actually man. gave it the highest out of all of us. Yes, he did. Um, yeah. overall, Mark, what do we give the whole rating? Three All out of us five? combined, yep. it was a 3.25. 3.25. So we're going to say three out of five stomps okay. is what we gave this film. Oh, that's right. You're so, right. We, and the reason being is is there are some things that we just didn't like about the film. So let's just go through that. Ruben, why did you give <laughs> your score, and what things did you not like about the film to create that score? Okay. Well, I gave it a three, and uh, and I actually – was pretty solid on that up to that. It's a good three. And I based that off of other Godzilla films that are, that are uh, made much better than this one. Um, not that this one's bad. It's just that we're going to come up with, you know, if we would have been doing this rating from before, you know, they would have gotten a higher rating than this. Some of them would have gotten a higher rating than this one. Um, and so I gave it a three because of that and because I thought that on this one, you can kind of see, even though the special effects were still good on this film, they weren't. I did. I didn't feel they were up to par with some of the other films that uh, that they've done. Um, I think the attention to detail is a is a little lacking, and that might be because of the rush. They rushed yeah. it out, you know, uh, and, and they, you know they tried to get it out. So. And it doesn't bother me that much because, well, it's a giant monster film and you're just not going to have that. But then but then I thought only in some areas did I see that. But like 
in the Ghidorah, where Ghidorah appears and comes out of the meteorite, I thought that was great special effects. Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought definitely. that was awesome. Yeah. yeah, you know, I said, man, well, that, that's better than some of the other ones. But then when, you know, you see some of the, the miniature villages and stuff, then you're kind of like, well, you know what? And even in a couple of scenes, I don't know if you guys noticed, they almost didn't use, it looks like they used, uh, man, uh, from lack of a better term, like a, like a cardboard cutout. Some of the Rodan and Godzilla uh, when during the yeah. fight scenes, you know, it's kind of like they just kind of cut out a Godzilla and it's kind of like just a silhouette of it. And I'm like, you know, I could tell, you know, even if it wasn't an HD, you could tell. Um, right. So it just that that's really what I didn't like. The only thing I didn't like about it, that it wasn't enough for me to say, you know what, this is this movie worth watching. You know, um, I expect the especially now. Um, compared to maybe when I used to watch it on TV, you know, where maybe it wasn't as noticeable because you just didn't have the clarity. We're kind of spoiled nowadays with this clarity thing. And um, so that's the only thing I didn't uh, didn't like about it. Otherwise, I thought the film was great, and, and, and I rank it up there with some of the, you know, if it's one of the films I would show somebody who's never seen a Godzilla film before. It would be one of the films that I might uh, throw in to have them watch, you know, depending on the person and all that. But uh, right. and, and I've got a question once once we get done with this and see what you guys think about, uh, and it pertains to these films and uh, you know how they're being remastered and everything. But okay. uh, that's it. That's all I got. All yeah. right. Well, don't forget that question, and we'll get that at, before we switch to yeah. the new Godzilla yeah. film. So, Mark, what about you? What yeah. did what, what did you give it? <clears throat> why? I gave it a three. Um, Definitely not my favorite Godzilla film, uh, but not by far not the worst. You right. know, and and one of the things that me and you talk about uh, constantly and have for years, and and me and King Ghidorah and in the flying heads that yeah. that uh, uh, even though I think King Ghidorah is probably his Godzilla's biggest foe and and and, and the baddest as far as the villains go, I. I've always had a problem with him not being able to control his neck or his head. Just and, flailing around. Yeah. More you know, so. And it's just kind of a wild shot here or there. Um, and so that that's always disappointed me. And I've always thought in, in, in uh, that they could do a better job, um, could have done a better job on him. Uh, and so that, that part of it kind of puts me down. Uh, and I just think that there is... I reckon the fight scenes could have been better for me. I mean, mm-hmm. I just think that uh, it was too cheesy in parts, uh, and and so the, that was disappointing to me. But I think you know it's a Godzilla movie. Anytime he, he's on the screen, I enjoy it. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, but then there are there are just areas that I thought that could they could have done a little bit better, maybe a little bit more serious than than what they were. But it was 1964, and and times were different then. So uh, yeah. I think that would be uh, uh, pretty much what I didn't like about it. Other than that, you know, I, I didn't have no problems with it. And that's a three. Yeah. So I gave it a, a three point five out, out of the out of the five. And of course, so overall, three out of five is what I'm three stomps out of five is what we gave it. But the reason why I gave it, which again, far from the worst Godzilla film, so far from the worst Godzilla film, but definitely not the best. Um, it is, of course, a staple because Ghidra's in it. Um, it's his introduction. But there was a lot of things that I can overlook as a fan, but as a moviegoer, couldn't overlook. And right. I'll break it up between the monsters and then the humans. And, and before you go there, and another thing that, that I wish they'd have done, and I told you earlier, was the adult Mothra instead of the right. larva. Right, versus the uh, larva. Because yeah. the larva, you know, pretty much got through anywhere he wanted. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was, every time he turned around, he was flying in the air and, and getting thrown here or there. So I would like to send, send, seen the adult version instead right. of the larva. Um, so, so we'll, so we'll break it down. We'll do, I'll do the human stuff first. Okay. Um, first biggest complaint, honestly, I thought was a waste of time and hurt the film was the TV show sequence when, uh, Shindo and his sister, there there's moms, and they watch that show, and it's like a big live broadcast. And they bring the fa- the Shobajin fairies in, and 
they talk to those two little boys and they sing the song and it's almost like a moth or music video. Total waste of time in my opinion. I just, I, I, it was a complete waste. Um, actually, to me, it hindered the film. They use that pretty much as a sequence to explain why there's only one moth or larva instead of two. And it was real quick. They literally, the show business, tell the boys, one died, but the other one protects the island. Then that was it. So I'm like, okay, you could have just came later and explained that you know when they're at the Senate or the government building or whatever. Perfect time. We would have just said, hey, moth is going to come help or whatever. So I had a big problem with that scene. To me, it was just it contrasted way too much against the human element of the of the movie. Um, could have done without it. I even remember when I was watching it, you know last night. Me and Ruben watched it last night. Um, when I got to that scene, I'm like, man, I may just you know because I did my own version of 1985. I disliked that scene so much that I was like, I may go re-edit this one and just take that out because it would be so much better. You know, it would go from a 3.5 up to at least a 4 uh, in my book. So I had an issue with that. And then the other only other issue I really had with the human element was Shindo was the biggest moron on the planet at the end of the film, okay? The dude goes through all this trouble, saving this princess, gets shot. They're there at the end. She remembers who she is and everything that's happened, and she's fixing to fly off, and she's all teary-eyed and weepy in his face about... You, I remember you saved me three times, and, and I'm like going, dude, you're in, man. You are now prince of whatever country it is. You go with her on that plane, and he's just like, I hope you have a good life. I'm like, you're a moron, dude. Like She is at your feet going, you are the man. You saved me three times. I'm like, dude, there you go. Just go you know, go for it. Go live as royalty. Nope. He just stays in his band and just says good luck. And then, I mean, like, and even when they're on the air, like, they're, they're standing outside and her plane takes off, and you see uh, Dr. Mirai and, and uh, Naoko stand there. It, it's almost like they look at him and go, idiot, and then just walk off, you know, and it's just him. I'm like, yeah. That, so that stuck out to me. I couldn't stand that. Um, but, uh, but so as far as the, that was really the, it for the human side. The, Believe the, it or not, I noticed that too. I'm did like, you, hey, dude? Yeah, I'm like, I mean, yeah, I did. I did. Man, she's giving you the end, and I'm like, what is he gonna do? Nothing. He <laughs> nothing. It's oh, like well. he's he's the moron <laughs> boy down the street, dude. It was just, but, <laughs> he's a cop, just doing his yeah, job. That's yeah. it. He's, he's a cop. He's John McClane. He's with the <laughs> Japanese John McClane. But um, but as far as the monster stuff, there was so much I did like about this film. Um. You know, when it comes to the monster action, uh, again, I, I, I think it would have been cool if the doll mothra was in it, but I understand where it's so quick. I get why they did the mothra larva. You know what I mean? Yeah, she couldn't do the best thing she really did was get on Rodan's back and, and web him up because that was really kind of the final thing that really helped defeat Ghidra. My complaints yeah. was, and again, it's probably where it was rushed. Some of the there were some scenes in, well, and mainly in the in the Godzilla and Rodan where they use almost like cardboard cutouts, you know, like the puppetry in the background where you see them way off in the distance. Where I'm like, man, this could have been so much cooler, but again, rushed, and I was and I had some issues with some of that. The special effects wasn't when the the, the monster fights, especially Godzilla and Rodan, just wasn't as epic as Godzilla and Mothra's fight earlier in the year. I mean, because if you look at that Mothra yeah. Godzilla fight. That is still a far better fight sequence than yeah. all four of them together in this film. Right, right. Not saying that this one was bad. It's just I I think they kind of got you know they they've been used to two monsters fight each other. Now they've got four on one scene. You want you know on the screen at once. How do you yeah. who gets how much screen time? Who does what? And how do we choreograph? You know I feel like this was their first time and they and they made a lot of errors because the choreography could have been better. But I still think they did a good job because it's a great fight sequence. Um, but I, I feel like that kind of suffered. Um, there's also a few things, th little small things where timing was off um, when it comes to like Godzilla getting shot um, by Geeter's rays or um, being pecked by Rodan like he gets shot. And then it's a, it's a slight delay in the reaction, almost like they didn't draw the electricity in time. Right. Um, and then of course, you know, first time out Ghidra, I kind of in agree because they do better in the next couple films, especially monster zero, as far as his head control. Cause it, if I'm mistaken, I think it, Ruben, you might remember too. I think it was the seven guys they had to use to control Ghidra. Um, wow. the, the heads was really the, the right. thing, you know I mean? It, it, there was a lot of, there were some great sequences, but again, they got it way better 
in Monster Zero than this one. Um, but there there was. It was a little too chaotic, you know, like kind of like what Mark, you were saying. So all in all, great film, but because of some of the lack of special effects, with them been rushing it, and then they really seemed to struggle a little bit choreographing all the monsters together on one scene, which, I mean, they fix later. I mean, when you go down to destroy all monsters, you've got way more monsters on screen at one time, and they did great you know, with that one. They struggled there. So because of that and the few issues with the human element and Shindo being just a moron um, is why I gave it a 3.5 out, out of 5. <laughs> Still great movie. Great yes. movie. I mean, yeah. there's a lot. You know, it's it's more in the, it's on the upper end of Godzilla films. But if we nitpick yeah. it, yeah. that's what we nitpick it for. So, And there, there you go, yeah. guys. That's that's why Moss Movie Stomp Down gave it 3 out of 5. Still worth checking out because it's Ghidra, man. It brings, I mean, the king of terror for his first time. Great film. They definitely got it right the next time around. So the next Godzilla film we'll be doing, of course, will be Godzilla's Monster Zero or Invasion of the Astro Monster, Ruben's favorite yeah. uh, of the films. My favorite, that's right. Um, yeah. Actually watched it today, too, uh, later on this afternoon. Uh, was waiting to, for Sarah to get off work and go to church so i popped it on i'm like man i was watching that fight sequence i'm like yeah they nailed it on this one you know but um so anyways but ruben before we what we're going to do next is of course we're going to talk about godzilla king of the monsters because it is a new parallel to this film and i really want to kind of break some things down but before we do that ruben you had a question about the the remasters yeah Yeah, my my question to you guys because i started thinking about it with um you know with all this remastering how would you guys feel about if they came back and remastered it a la like uh, Star Wars? You know how in Star Wars, you know, the original versus what they have now got cleaned up so much that some fans didn't like it. How would you guys, in your opinions, how would you feel if they did that with these films? In other words, clean up the the wires, you know, that show when, when uh, some of the battles are going on and, uh, uh, and maybe add some special effects in there digitally. Would you guys be for or against that? I think for for me, I wouldn't be opposed to fixing things like the wires, getting those yeah. removed. That I would be okay with. I would yeah. not be okay with adding digital special effects because it would be too much, I think, of a contrast because if you look at yeah. the level of special effects. Now, if you go back and I, you know, I mean that anything pre nineteen eighty five, because I think the nineties you could do that with, but with this the Showa uh-huh. era, I think because of how dated the special effects are, even though they're great and they're yeah. beautiful special effects, it would be too much of a stark contrast between yeah. the, that and computer animation or computer effects to actually. Right. Do yeah. anything, you know, and that's that was what I started thinking about. Like, how would I feel about that if they went in there and did that, like, cleaned up Ghidorah to, uh, you know, make them, even though it would still be the Tsunamation, but clean it up digitally where, you know, they would add, you know, it's kind of hard for me to explain. It's kind of what they did with Star Wars, yeah, you know, um, and uh, and that's the best thing I started thinking about. It. I was like, well, you know, how would I feel about that? I th- um, yeah, I think removing yeah, some yeah, stuff yeah. to help would be good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd like to see it cleaned up and and, and remastered. Look, you know, make it look. You know, maybe take that thirty-five millimeter original or the Toho scope original and and clean it up. I wouldn't like the digital because you're right. Because they, even though I think they could get away with it if they matched it up somehow, you know, but it would be tough. I, I don't even know that they're they doing could, so much. They could probably match yeah. it up because it's the effects are so so different now compared to, to compared to back then. I mean, uh, uh, obviously, yeah. I think it would be easier to do a Star Wars than you would be able to do one of yeah. the Godzilla films yeah. just because of uh, yeah. where yeah. the special and, effects. Yeah, I mean, the data, but I, I was thinking, you know, I was saying, well, they can at least clean up. You know, would that be would that take away for you guys if it? Cleaned up the strings and cleaned up the gunshots. Right. In this well, movie. Yeah. we'll use that as an example. Yeah, the gunshots in this movie. And, oh my and gosh. Maybe, uh, the, yeah. The pew <laughs> yeah, pew the guns. Movie, I'm, the gunfights in this movie. I think know, definitely and, fixing and, that, they could. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I would be all right with that myself. Because, truthfully, you know, this may be blasphemy to Star Wars fans. I'm fine with 
the changes George Lucas made for the most part. They're, it's his movie. His movies, he can do whatever he wants. Yeah. You know, um, you know, and I'm okay with it for the most part. You and, know, and even with but, those two, uh, I, me personally, I am more prone to the originals. I like the remasters of the originals without the special effects, but right. I, I'm not against the new ones with the special effects because for the most part, they did add really well. I mean, you look at the, you know, the lost scene with, with Han and Jabba, you know, on Tatooine. Yeah. It was a great right. sequence that they actually filmed and they were able to CGI, you know, Jabba in there. That was awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It was really yeah. good. So it had its moments definitely where I was like, this helped it out a lot. Yeah. But of course, you know, those are, yeah. those special effects were even in the seventies. So above and beyond what Toho was doing, um, that it, that made yeah. it easier. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, but I have a, I have a set of, of DVDs I bought that I don't even know what's it, it came with the original unedited version of Star Wars so it wasn't a new hope you know remember if you remember it added yeah. a new hope later and it, it, each film that I had it was the first three uh, the first three or episode three four and five I mean a uh, four five and six it came the DVD came with the unedited and then it came with the special edition I know which release you were and, talking about I know exactly which one you're talking yeah. about yeah, and, and I, it's, they're hard to find now. I've never seen them anywhere, but I went out and bought them as soon as I saw them. Because before then, I had to have I had a Korean bootleg of a la- of the laser disc transfer. Oh yeah, Lucas yeah. would uh, yeah. And so I watched the two. You know, I was able to watch the two, and I said, you know what? I don't mind the changes. But that was back then with the special edition versus the original uncut theatrical. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, of course, they they they've gone further and further up. Right. But, when it comes uh, when it comes to I Star Wars, I, I still I still have my '80s VHS releases, like the original cover. Oh yeah, yeah, I still rock those. Yeah, I, yeah. But I, I, yeah, I, I'm with you. I think it's a good you know the, the removing you know cleaning it up, removing the, the the strings, fixing some of the sound effects, like the yeah the horrible gun sound effects. In this yeah. film. Um, I think that would enhance it. I think that would make it a better experience, definitely. So part so so yes and no. Um, uh, depending on what they did, but as far as the cleanup and things, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I think that would be really yeah. cool. All right. Now All I will right. say, yeah. I, Ruben, I do want to add because now that I've picked up these, um, for those listening, um, you may have seen me share it on Facebook. I was actually able to grab, I think six Toho Blu-ray releases here locally um, for about ten bucks a piece. And for those who know about oh. the Toho Blu-rays, they range around sixty Man. to seventy-five dollars a piece to get imported over. Um, so, I mean, I got a steal on these and, uh, it was awesome. But so I got, uh, Mothra versus Godzilla, Ghidra, the three of the monster, Godzilla's monster zero, son of Godzilla, Godzilla's Meg Godzilla, terror of Meg Godzilla. And then an awesome four disc version of Frankenstein Congress, of the world. Um, oh. oh, dude, it's, uh, it's so cool. But <laughs> so the first one I watched was Godzilla's Meg Godzilla. And I, so I'm, and I'm stating this, talking about this because of what you asked Ruben, when you get when they in the on the Toho Blu-ray, the picture quality is so unbelievably amazing compared to anything else we've got. Like we've got those, um, oh help me, the Kraken Blu-ray releases of like you know God of yeah. Monster and stuff. Now they're great transfers. They do not compare to the Toho transfers. The Toho Blu-rays that they don't the Krakens don't even come close. Um, I'm watching God of Godzilla, and it's the first scene where. Meg Godzilla is still in the bodysuit of Godzilla, and Godzilla shows up in a first fight in the in the city at night. Um, it was an experience because when the explosions are happening in that sequence, you can clearly. I remember there's two two parts where you can clearly see that the background was the matte painting wall because you could see the shadows glaring off, and you could really tell this is an actual set. Like, I mean, it was unbelievable how crystal clear it was. And at first I was like, well, that kind of sucks. You know, it's like, I'm actually seeing the wall right there. You know, it's like, it's not, they didn't bother going yeah. further. They're right at the edge of the wall doing this fight sequence. But then the explosions happen. And for those who've seen Godzilla's Meg Godzilla, you know, the explosions that happened in that first fight between him and Godzilla at night, it's probably the largest amount of explosions in any Godzilla sequence ever. It's insane. When you watch in the clarity of that Toho Blu-ray, I sat there going, how did these dudes not die? Like, it was astounding, the amount of explosions and how big those explosions were. And they're, and they're just, the fire's just all over their suits. I'm like, dude, 
those dudes, man, hats off to them because <laughs> I did not realize how intense it was until I saw the Toho Blu-rays. So, um, so anyway, gets a chance. I mean, it, watching the Toho Blu-rays for some of the films, um, really, it's a new experience. It really is a new experience because of the clarity. So, um, so, so then, like they're like, let's say they could go in and digitally change that back wall. Would you be for or against that? I would be for that. I would definitely yeah. be for that. You know, not yeah, changing and, the. And, Clarity yeah, of the explosions, that's what, but I, that's what I meant about digitally replacing things, like kind of like that, you know, which I, I think is a little more than cleaning up, and uh, you know, so that's that's what really got me thinking about it. When I was like, when I saw some stuff in this movie, I say, you know, I wonder how true fans would feel about that. Yeah, you know, so I think they could. Some of them like that, like yeah. on that scope that you're talking about. Yeah, I think they could do that. So, yeah. But, all right. Any final messages on this version on this movie before we move on to this little quick section we're gonna do here? Anybody else about Ghidra, Three Headed Monster? No, we're uh, I'm good on this end. Ruben, I'm good. 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 Okay, I, I'm good, man. All right, guys. Great movie. Please check it out. You will not be disappointed. It is a great Godzilla film. We did give it a three out of five, or three point five, three out of five, three out of five. But still, really, really good. I mean. You got to be around one, one and a half to actually be a bad film with the way we're doing these ratings. But uh, want to move on to the next Godzilla film that's coming out in two months, pretty much. Godzilla King of the Monsters. The reason being is you've got Godzilla, King Ghidorah, Rodan, and Mothra, and we just watched all four of them on on screen. So I mean, it's it, it's a clear parallel of what's going to happen. Um, I don't think Mike. Doherty is doing a you know a remake of Ghidra Three Monsters by any means, but he you know I mean when you you know they're like oh they're bringing you know the other three big names of Toho, I agree with Ghidra, totally agree with Mothra, Rodan I'm kind of eh on because yes Rodan had his own feature film he was in several Godzilla films but when I think of somebody else that could possibly be a bigger name. I have to go with the Godzilla fan base and go, where's Angerwurst, man? Angerwurst wow. should have been, yeah. you know, why didn't you bring him instead of Rodan? Because Rodan, I mean, he did, he make it into the 90s film. You know, he was in Godzilla Mega Godzilla 2. Um, he is a big big character. But when I'm thinking of an American remake and, you know, you've got three flying monsters and one land monster, replace Rodan, bring in Angerwurst because he stood by Godzilla's side more times than, than Rodan has. You know, so to me, I, you know, I'm, they did the same monsters, but I'm like, there could have been some changes. Do you guys think that the, he's going to pull a lot of references from this film for the new film? Wow. Very possibly, uh, but he's he's adding more monsters in. It's true. Okay. We so, know of two yeah, other kaijus yeah. so, or titans. I'm sorry. Yeah. Titans. And, and so you kind of have to see where they're at. What side they're on, where they're coming from, um, or even how much they're in the film, too. right? Uh, but I think that they, uh, um, he definitely could. Um, but I don't, uh, I, think, I don't, I don't I think, think he, he already will. did. Yeah, I think he he already did by just from what I can tell from the trailers and from whatever I've read online. Eudora is is here to destroy Earth. And uh, and Godzilla is a guardian monster, like in this film. Yeah. Uh, Mothra is a guardian monster, like in this film. And I don't know about Rodan. I'm I'm making that assumption, right there. You know, I know for sure. I've read where Godzilla will be a guardian monster. Um. So I think I think he will grab some. Um. And I think you know what to. From everything I've read, the way they're doing these movies, they are ref- they're they're actually taking the Godzilla timeline or or lore. Let's call it lore, folklore of Godzilla, the Toho folklore, and and incorporate it in their movies in some way, which I think is a positive. Um, so I think he is gonna, and I bet there's gonna be a lot of Easter eggs in there. Oh, he I'm, stated. I'm and then the newest total, total, they just did an article, uh, the main article for the new Total Film magazine was this film. And he stated there are 
layers upon layers of Easter eggs throughout this film for the Godzilla fans. Uh, Because they were talking about, I mean, we know Gareth Edwards, you know, with this 2014 film, he was, you know, he wanted to make movies because of King Kong versus Godzilla. And he's a big Godzilla fan. Yeah. I don't know that he's as big Godzilla fan as Doherty because Doherty was talking that article. They're like, well, how much do you love Godzilla? And he talked about how he had found a, uh, he just found a Bible of his from when he was a kid and they had pictures in it and stuff. And he drew on Godzilla in some of those pictures, you know, like you imagine like him oh. drawing him, Godzilla fighting <laughs> Samson and, and things like that. So, uh. so the dude's definitely a fan, big fan. Um, yeah. of course we know he's a big Rodan lover. Um, I, the reason why I brought it up is because the newest tra- TV spot, I'm sorry, where you do see the two another Kaiju's a little bit more. Um, there's a yes. shot at the end that's really quick, but you see Rodan flying right at Ghidorah. And I was like, dude, I instantly thought, and Ruben, I sent you that little video clip last night. Yeah. One of my favorite scenes in this Ghidra the Three-Headed Monster was Ghidra's chasing Rodan, and Rodan turns around, and dude, you know what I'm talking about? They like, drill yeah. each other, yeah. man. And I'm yeah. like, man. So yeah. I think, like, how much is he going to to pull? Because I don't want to... I don't want to give any spoilers because I know Pete's listening, and Pete is. <laughs> uh, hats off to Pete, man. He will not watch a trailer. He won't. He won't read anything. He's going to this movie. He, he's going to get the best experience of this film out of any fan on the planet. I think so. Hats off to Pete for it because I can't do it. But I, I do know a lot of what's going to happen and how the three acts of this film play out. So I don't want to give any spoilers. Okay. But it's going to be interesting. I think you know there's things he's definitely pulled. I feel like from this one, but I don't know. T- I don't know tons. You know, I don't know everything about this film, but I know what to expect. Yeah. And a general, you know, more detailed synopsis of each act versus the overall film, and everything yeah. that keeps being released, um, just yeah. stables more of what I know. I, you know, in total film, there's that picture they released of Ghidra where he's just like roaring up at the sky. Oh, I know exactly where that's at, and that scene's going to be absolutely epic. Um, yeah, but I feel like and that's without even mentioning, uh, uh, you know, they got to tie it in with the with the next one, which is Kong. Yep. You know, guys on Kong. So who knows what there? I have no idea how they're going to do that, but I'm sure they will. Yeah, I, I always look at it like this: in the movie we just watched, and I think Ruben stated something about it. This is King Ghidorah, the three headed monster. This is his movie. Yeah. Okay. And and so he's, as I look at it, the main character. Now Godzilla, yeah. he's king of the monsters. Does he have to pull other monsters in to help him to beat? Then he's not really king of the monsters now, is he? No. You know. And so that's where I have a problem. Where I hope they don't pull from this movie to do the same thing, because this is about Godzilla. He's king of the monsters. He needs to go in there and kick butt. Right. And, and so that's kind of the way I look at it and hope they pull from. Now, whether they do or not, I may be out in left field and don't know a thing, but he's Godzilla. He's king of the monsters. Well, and that's and, and the, in the in the first, the, the last Godzilla movie, you know, he stands his own. It's just him against uh, uh, against the other monsters. And we're on this one. He needs some help, you know. Just, just remains to be seen. Well, but he did if take I, a nap that, in the last one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did take a nap. He had to take yeah. a nap. He had to take a nap before he finished it off. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> look how he finished it well, off, I'm though. And yeah, I, and ripping, I think, ripping that mouth open and just blasting down his throat was, yeah, oh, man. Uh, yeah, that's that, epic. Phew. Epic. And, and you got to think, too, Doherty's got to top that. You know? yeah. Well, he's he, he stated in the article, too, I mean, when it comes to a giant monster film like this, he he even said he's like you know with the human element you've got to make it good, but you got to remember three quarters of your film needs to be monster fights. And he stated they have done no yeah. holds barred. I mean, there's monster fight, there's major monster action. And I don't think this is going to spoil anything too in all three all three acts of the film, and it's just yeah. going to be epic. And I will say too, and, uh, oh. <laughs> We got, of course, you know, where we play the movie in the background while we were doing this. Ghidra's appearance just happened. Just yeah. came out the meteor. It's yeah. such an awesome sequence. Um, the King of the Monsters title for this one, I will say, is titled that for a reason. That is not a throwback to the 56 film um, or just his title of being the King of the Monsters over the years. That title plays a key role into the actual story of the film uh, for a reason. 
It's going. I think it's going to be epic. Two months away, we're going to start seeing TV spots yeah. rolling out here soon. Man, I cannot wait. Um, but but I do and, think. And one other, yeah, one other thing though, there there is some to the high C era. There is one thing me and you talked about that, that that may show up, and it and it's actually in the toys and stuff. But I don't want to give any any oh, spoilers yeah. away. Because Pete's, you know what I'm saying? Pete has, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, Pete, yeah, we're doing this for you, about. buddy. Um, yes, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, um, yeah so I'm like, hey, they, they did draw um, from it. And so uh, just those little hints right there tells me it. it I can't wait. I'm just. It's going to be absolutely, you know, absolutely epic. I thought I was excited for, for, for 2014, but I'm beyond that on this one. Um, as far as excitement goes. Um, oh yeah. So yeah. and hey Mark, I, you're, great. you're gonna get your wish, man. It's it's gonna be the the adult Mothra. You know, yeah, you know you'll see the larva yeah. a little oh, bit yeah. in the film, obviously, because yeah. we've seen it. But uh, when the fight happens, well, you, you know, in, in this one we just watched, you know, the larva is in the air, flying. Boy, he's <laughs> yeah, ground, yeah. So. He's thrown <laughs> all over the place. He's whipped around gets like nothing. hammered, hammered. Yeah. So, um, we'll ride on. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm pumped, man. I cannot wait for this movie. Uh, it's going to be the movie of the year for me. Um, I mean, I've stated on the other, you know, the main episodes and. Um, I, the only reason why I think it won't be the number one movie, of the film is because of the years, because Avengers is coming out and Avengers is Avengers, you know, 21 films, yeah. 11 years coming to a head here. That's yeah, the only reason that, why that, that doesn't do it for me, man, but it's going to be, Godzilla, I think it'll be close. Godzilla's gonna be a movie. I think this will be the first Godzilla film to hit a billion. Yeah, it's, worldwide. It's I think gonna be, be good. good. Oh, it's dude, it's gonna be, gonna be epic, <laughs> epic. So, all right. You watch, so, you watch Avengers. I'm watching. Avengers. Oh, dude, I'm, I'm gonna watch them both, man. What are you talking about, dude? I can't I'm talking over and over. I got this. This one may be played constantly. I mean, I know I'll be going to theaters. This will. This will definitely create my record for movie goings. This for one film. There's no question yeah. about it. Because I want to see. How many it. times? How many times did you see the, the 14? Three times. It's just three times, and, that, and that's how many times I saw it. Let's see what long. Yep. Yeah, three, three times. Three, yeah, three times for 14. Times three times will not be enough yeah. for this one. I, I just yeah. know it. it will not be enough. Because, I mean, yeah. have to, you know, my daughter's going to be like, Dad, you have to take me to see it. Because I told her I'm going to take her to see it. But I'm going to have to go like the Thursday night first by myself or with you and, and Matt or somebody. No kids. You know, can't can't take the kids. Because um, I want to be able to, to enjoy it, you know, and, and get that experience. Then I want to go and take the kids. And then I want to go again for my second viewing. And by myself, and then my third viewing by myself, and my fourth viewing, and then it'll just keep going on and on. <laughs> they'll, they'll be like, "Man, I don't know who this one guy is, but he's financed the whole movie by himself just from movie <laughs> movie tickets." But uh, it's going to be epic. So, okay, um, another great episode. Gita Three and Monster, check it out. We got the, this. You know, these same four monsters hitting the screen very soon, two months from now, and it's going to be absolutely epic. Make sure you see King of the Monsters. It will be the Legitimate best movie of the year, but Avengers will probably still make more money just because it's Disney and Avengers, but it's going to be the movie of the year. So um, next month, okay, so we're going to do something a little bit different here. I have pretty much pulled rain and picked everything other than the thing as far as the in-betweens. What would you gentlemen like to do next? You or Ruben? Somebody throw a movie. Wow, you just threw that out there. I did, man. You I want to keep it interesting. Yeah, I know it. Yeah. Wow. You put me on the spot. Everyone's like, oh my. Everyone listens. Yeah. like, what? What's it going to be? You know, the, t- <laughs> yeah. the suspension's rising at this point. Um, we're going off off key, right? Yes, yeah, so we're outside the Godzilla series. Okay. Outside, you know, so we're any giant monster film or monster film outside, outside wow. of Godzilla. Um, man, the original Aliens would... Would be a pretty good one. The original uh, Alien, yeah, not original. James Cameron, the Ridley Scott. Yes, alien. yes, yes, yes. Ruben, what about the you? The original nineteen, yeah, that, hey, that would work for me. So I don't alien? own a copy of that. So I, yeah. do you have? Uh, I don't own a hot copy, so that'll just give me an excuse to go out and get one. No, there I'm you go, dude. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. That'll Epic. just give me an excuse to go out and get it. Yeah. Epic movie, I, you know, because I, I think that whole series. Then the Predator got added in, and and so there's a lot there. So start with the original on that. That series sounds like pretty good to me. Work through the aliens. Yeah. Oh, dude, yeah. I'm down. Oh, yeah. oh, I think yeah. the listeners be down too because those are, yeah. you know, that's one of the ones too, man. 
in space they can't hear you scream oh. dude i remember <laughs> yeah as a kid that's one of those movies too man it's like i'm like eight years old and my father's like let's watch this movie like cause that's what an eight-year-old needs to be watching um i absolutely love it i mean yeah i've been a fanatic of those movies my yeah. whole life so i remember wanting to we had like a book club we had to read books uh, this was in eighth or ninth grade and i wanted to read that i had the novel the novelization oh they, yeah they wouldn't let me they, 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 didn't, they wouldn't let me read it Really, man. Or a book reporter or whatever. Like, oh, but yes. they, 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 oh, it's a screenplay. No, it just has to be a book. Uh, dude, but so. uh, yeah, man, when it came out, I mean, actually, it was, I mean, I remember it being, I, mean, I guess, groundbreaking because alien movies for this, this was a pretty graphic alien movie. Oh, yeah. You oh, know, oh, as far as definitely. aliens. Uh, you know, as far as and alien movies before that, I mean, you had the invasion of the body snatchers and stuff like that, but. I remember this one kind of like, whoa, this one's this one's out there, man. This is almost, oh, man. Was, you know, this is this was not a this was a sci-fi horror. Oh yeah, you know, I mean, this you, was you a, at, a sci-fi horror. Yeah, we could. I mean, I don't even know. We need to watch it. We could just jump right into this one right now. You know, it's, just, it's <laughs> know, such yeah, a staple. Right. Yeah. Um, you're right. We're gonna say that for the episode because yeah, there's there's a lot can be talked about when it comes to Alien yeah. and really Scott H.R. Yeah. Geiger, Sigourney Weaver. I mean. Every bit of this movie is just yeah. unbelievable. So yeah, that's a great one. We'll we'll do that. We'll start moving we'll to that the, one. the alien movies. So uh uh which would be a good idea. So all right. Well there you go, guys. So join us next month for the nineteen seventy nine Ridley Scott Alien. Yeah. Yes. Where man <laughs> for the I mean that's the first time for me as a kid it, truly an alien was scary, you know what I mean? Because yeah. uh-huh. you watch Critters, which there's a new Critter movie coming out, a new show. So excited about that. But uh remember watching Critters. I loved it. It was so much fun. And you look at, yeah, I mean, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And a lot more, to me, nothing scary. Saw Alien, changed it all. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, that, good man. That, you know, that created, what, uh, 25 years later, I'm setting up at midnight. We're talking about movies. Yeah. <laughs> scary movies. Yep. <laughs> what did I do to myself back then? <laughs> you started it all. So. <laughs> but, all right. Well, guys, thank you so much. And another great Monster Movie Stop Down. Hope you all enjoy it. Sarge, again, shout out to you, brother. Hope you guys are staying safe on the road. Thank you for messaging in your all's, the information in your stop review rating. Um, again, thank you guys so much. This is Chase. And Mark. And, and Ruben. There we go. We Y'all have a good night. <laughs> good night.